So spring is back, which means that the flowers are back, which means that macro photography is back on the table. So today is going to be my first macro shoot of the year. I haven't picked up a macro lens since autumn because once all the flowers and the bugs disappear, there's nothing really interesting to photograph in terms of macro in a forest. So today is going to be my first try at macro because I think I almost forgot how it feels and I'm gonna take you with me. Now what I am really concerned about is the wind because if you have wind, then the teeny tiny details start to flutter back and forth and I don't have a speed light with me, which means that I'll have to have a fast shutter speed and a high ISO to actually capture stuff frozen in time. So this is the first task of my first macro shoot. You know, I think here this is going to be the whole photo shoot for today because there are some flowers here and there is one right over here. So this is going to be the first composition. Okay, the necessary lens switch. I'm gonna be using the 105 millimeter f2.8 Sigma macro lens and this is an art series lens which means that it's performing really well. So let me just switch it. So let me just switch these two up. You know, I wish camera manufacturers would actually make a lens that would do it all. You know, the really wide, the really telephoto and the macro capabilities. This way you wouldn't have to switch lenses all the time. And that's something that I really hate is switching lenses. Oh, manual, manual focus? Oh yeah. You see the flower jittering? It's fluttering, which means that I'm going to have to have a fast enough shutter speed in order to freeze the motion. Oh man, I'm shaking so violently. It's almost not fair. I think I can go to F16 with this one. And I'm way underexposed, like seriously underexposed. Oh, shadow, no, not the shadow. <laughs> you know, but there are actually two flowers over here. One is in the shade of the other. And I think, I think I can capture both of them at the same time. So let's see how this works. Not really sure, but let's just see how it works. Hello, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> You know, this is completely undiffused lighting, which means that there's gonna be so many shadows on this flower that it's almost that it's almost funny. I'm gonna try a couple of more, maybe emphasize on the shadows. Okay, what more can we find? There is another flower right beside this one, and this one's facing downwards, right over here. Also blistering in the sun, and there are some shadows going across it. Maybe I can capture this as well to kind of emphasize on the shadow being cast on the flower. Oh, this is an impossible task. Now you can probably tell that the sun is going down behind the clouds, which means light is gone. And I have another subject over here, this guy. You know, it's hard enough to work with, with low light, but having almost zero light handheld macro is actually really difficult. So let me show you what I mean. Manual focusing is such a fun thing. Okay, this would be nice. So I'm gonna put my arms over here and use this as a tripod. Because I did not bring a tripod with me today. Like I'm way, I'm two stops underexposed with ISO 500. Maybe I can go a little bit further to get the full power. I'm pushing my camera into my face to actually keep it stable. Again, with the lens switching, so macro goes in and my video lens goes on. Now one of the most challenging things in macro photography is to keep a fast enough shutter speed so that you freeze any motion in time. The shaking of the camera if you're hand holding and the subject fluttering in the wind. But at the same time you need to keep your aperture closed down to almost the max like f11, f16 in order to get a deep enough depth of field to get most of the subject in focus. But also at the same time keeping the ISO low so that you get a good quality image. Now without an additional speed light this is pretty much impossible when the Sun is going down so I have to hurry <laughs> you know what I think I'm gonna do the rest of the video in the studio so let's head there right now you know my girlfriend thinks I should get a haircut she's probably right anyway I've imported all the photographs into Lightroom and I have to pick the ones that are actually going to be good since I'm pretty sure there most of them are going to be motion blurry so let's just look through them and see not okay not okay not okay blurry not okay but some of them are in focus some of them oh this one oh this one's like almost in focus but there is motion blur you can clearly see motion blur so not a lot that I was capable of, of actually getting out of 
blurry, 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 blurry. I mean, you can see how hard it is to actually get a sharp image handheld in a low light situation because I wanted to keep my eyes so low. Therefore, I had my shutter speed only 1 25th 125th of a second to get a sharp image. Now these look promising. You know what? I actually think that this one is the best one out of all of them. It's very much underexposed with ISO 500 and F11, but I think it's sharp enough and it's not motion blurry. So I'm gonna go with this photograph. So let's go into the develops tab, hit the auto button and magically exposure is corrected. Now, of course, I'm gonna manually tweak it, but I actually like the way this photograph looks. There is enough blurriness in the background and the central part is sharp enough. You can see a little bit of the grain because of ISO 500. Again, the settings were 125th of a second, F11, ISO 500 at 105 millimeters. Okay, so this would be the basic adjustments. I want to get as much contrast out of the image as I can. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is correct for chromatic aberration if there is any, not really sure. But more importantly, what I wanna do is crop the image in because this just calls for a vertical shot. Now I'm going to go here, three by two, so there we go, a nice cropping. I'm gonna tweak it just a teeny tiny bit and then go into Photoshop and give it that soft glowy look. And you will see how this is done, it's very easy. Okay, so before and after, quite a big difference. Now let's put this into Photoshop. So edit in Photoshop and give it that final touch. So first of all, duplicate the layer. I'm going to add sharpness other, high pass filter right over here. I'm gonna go with 0.5, I think it's going to be just enough. Give it that nice sharpness as you can see over here, just nudging the edges. Okay, overlay, I'm going to merge the two layers together and then duplicate it, go to overlay, go to about 20% and then filter, blur, Gaussian blur right over here. 40% or 40 pixels in radius, depending on the, the resolution of the image. So you might have to play with this. And before this layer, I'm going to add a contrast layer to take down the contrast just a teeny tiny bit. There we go. So we have now the before and the after. You can see that soft glow appearing. And then I'm going to add a vibrance layer pump up the colors and finally the curves adjustment layer where I will lift up the shadows just a teeny tiny bit of course only maybe 20% of this before after now what I did forget to do is to add a vignette I can do this in Photoshop or I can do it in Lightroom here I'm actually going to do it in Photoshop I'm going to merge all the layers together so shift Control, alt and E to get a new layer I'm going to switch this to a smart object Filter, camera raw filter. Now this gives me the same tools as you have in Lightroom. So the basics, the curves, the details. So everything is the same as in Lightroom and you also have the vignette effects and I can add a vignette like this, change the midpoint, make it a little bit softer to feather it out, apply and there we go. So before and after. And I can swap things around, maybe add the curves adjustment layer afterwards and there we go let's compare the before and after back in Lightroom this is the original photo that we started with very much underexposed and hard to see what's actually happening and this is the end result that I made in Lightroom and in Photoshop and I'm actually really happy how this photograph came out so there you have it I got one decent photograph out of today's macro photography session which was really hard taking photographs handheld in a low light situation but at least I managed to get one single photograph and I think it was completely worth it. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Also, while you're at it, please consider subscribing to the channel if you're new and hit the like button for the algorithm. It really means a lot. And well, I will see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye-bye.